Right, hello, welcome to the Performance Podcast. This episode is going to be focused on the Q&A that I said that we were going to do. So we're going to run through the questions here. If we don't get through them all, which we probably won't do, we're going to do like a part two and a part three. So don't worry, your questions will get answered. So Leanne, with uh, 30 questions. Best way to build fitness alongside the upper lower body strength workouts. Sometimes I hear it's counterproductive to work out too many times a week. Is this meaning upper lower body sessions? You guys sometimes work out five to six times a week, don't you? Right, okay, I'll answer that. <laughs> well, the answer, believe it or not, I didn't recall. <laughs> Anyhow, right, okay, yes, it is counterproductive. It can be counterproductive, okay, but you're either not eating enough, okay, to fuel your training. So there's no such thing as overtraining theoretically. Okay, you're just not eating enough. But if a muscle group isn't fully recovered before you train it again, don't bother, okay? Now, when it comes to cardiovascular fitness and things, hypertrophy should be covering both of them anyway if it's high intensity weight training. But if I train my arms, okay, twice a week, I'm trying to think what I doing. If I train my arms twice a week, I make sure I give it enough gap in the week. Okay, so say I train on Monday, then I train on Friday to make sure they're recovered enough to, to make it uh, justifiable to actually uh, train them again. So people like Mike Menzer, okay, he should train like twice or three times a week, but he trained hard and he made sure every muscle was fully fatigued and then he just recovered, okay? We ate, slept, trained, recovered, repeated. Okay, so it can become counterproductive. That's why generally we only do two or three sessions at most in our sessions because, well, it's, it's optimal when you do that. There's nothing wrong with adding other bits in and stuff, like, uh, you know, your boxing. But if you're not feeling like you're fully recovering, eat more of what we ask you to eat. There you go, putting it simply, okay? How long, Liam, how long does it take to reach your own fitness goals or does the end goal change as time goes on? Okay, how long is a bit of string, right? So. <laughs> it shouldn't ever really reach your fitness goals and such. It's a bit like, uh, you know, I'm going to say the FA Cup one here, go. so it's a bit like <laughs> someone, someone that strives for a long time to be in the Premiership and then they've done that, okay, and then they, I want to win the FA Cup, right? So they, years and years and years, and I don't know, like five years, suddenly they win the FA Cup, the following morning for them is very, very depressing. That's it, they've reached their goal. It's a beautiful thing about what we do, you should never really fully reach your goal, and if you do reach it, you should be working damn hard to maintain it, okay? So, but, and in terms of did your fitness goal change, it's dependent on whether you've got to have a, ooh, a specific requirement to do that, i.e. like maybe you're going to start doing marathons or something. So then, yeah, your specific aim goal will change because you have to train slightly different to be able to do that particular thing. But you shouldn't really, you know, your goals towards your fitness should, be, should kind of stay the same but be continually progressing, continually progressing. If I suddenly change from hypertrophy to doing running every day, I wanted to continue to grow muscle, it's not going to happen, okay? And also, hypertrophy kind of covers the both. Should be hitting your cardiovascular system as well as your muscular system, okay? Just make sure that it's high intensity weight training. If you're a power lifter or anything like that, then your training will kind of slow down and you would have to add some form of cardiovascular fitness in, but yeah, that long's a bit of string, really. You just, you, it's impossible to know. It's how much work you want to put in, how consistent you are with your training to actually reach any form of goal, full stop, right? Yeah, right, okay. Liam again, we'll go through and round it. What's your favourite and least favourite exercise and why? Um, I would probably say tricep extension. <laughs> so that's <a> bit great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tricep extension, um, I feel like I get a good squeeze out of it. Um, good contraction and I'm, overall I just like, I think tricep is probably one of my favourite muscles to train. Um, and then uh, probably my least favourite exercise will be um, the lat pullover. I find it hard to sort of connect with and squeeze, you know, just, just to get the feeling. But then I do like, I do like trying it and, and doing it because it's hard, you know, it's tough. So you've got to just keep persevering with it and keep trying it. So, yeah, I'd probably say my so, tricep extension. My least favourite would be lat pullover. Young Harold. <laughs> um, my favourite exercise would have to be a burpee. Um, just purely because it's tough. Imagine Darren it's versatile. <laughs> Darren don't like burpees. I do them with correct form. I burp. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, burpees. Um, cause it's, it's more tailored towards my boxing. It's explosive. It's fast movements. Um, my least favourite, I would have to say, um, a back exercise. Probably bent over rows, standing rows. Okay, I really struggle. So with the form with that with a technique and trying to connect with the muscle because my back isn't developed enough it's one of the areas of training i've got to work on so that's what i'm doing at the minute i'm working on uh, my back 
But yeah, that's my favourite and my least favourite. Okay, you're saying about pullover the dumbbells before the thing didn't record. Okay, so I, when you're doing standard dumbbell pullovers, got pull from here rather than from the hands as such. It's, this is actually essentially a chest exercise when you're doing a standard pullover. If you have a machine, like Josh was talking earlier, which you didn't hear. <laughs> okay, if you have a machine, you pull from the elbow, and that's how the back activates. If you watch my arms come around, they come around a 90 degree angle. If I come around like this, that's not clear on my back. Okay, essentially that's hitting my chest. If I've got something behind here, and I bring that through and round, back exercise. My favorite back uh, exercise or back, uh, muscle group is back to train, because it is, and I can lift heavy of it. Yeah, yeah like that. down the same. Mine is a pullover, I like a little pullover. Just don't do the bench. Long ways, I land at the side pretty much, and just, yeah, I get a good, really good connection on my lats, and I like putting it through. Unfortunately, most gyms don't have a pullover machine, so you kind of got to work with what you got. And then, least favourite is deadlift, just because it takes a long time to set the bar up, get warmed up, and because I'm not a power lifter, I don't really find it too beneficial to do deadlifts. Maybe it would be, but again, it's just time, time uh, consuming. I don't really want to kind of get into that no. with deadlift, so, with, yeah, that's mine. But with a deadlift as such, do you, uh, how much time have we got? Uh, we're doing quite well actually. I think it's just like six and a half minutes. Okay, cool. So, so deadlifting is a very controversial move. Okay, there's nothing that much wrong with it apart from as Josh said, it takes a long time to get the form right and also to set up. Okay, but the actual benefits against the disbenefits, well, the disbenefits definitely di overweigh the benefits of doing a deadlift. So this is why we don't really do them in the sessions. They're too time consuming, a lot can go wrong and injuries. Other exercises and other things we can do that are equally is equally is beneficial and easier to do and you'll get more from them and they're safer to do as such and going back to our favorite exercises okay if you have a favorite exercise compared to an exercise you don't like doing what one should you do to get most from your body the one you don't like the one like you don't like doing okay because it shocks your central nervous system more anything that's comfortable in the body it's quite happily just continue to do that okay anything you make it uncomfortable in the body it stresses out a little bit more okay and it has to adapt to it more so if you find the same kind of sessions you don't enjoy doing, do it. You'll get more from it. Right, we've got two and a half bit minutes, but I've liked this one because it's quite personal. Liam, again, if you weren't in the fitness industry, what would you be doing instead? I think you probably know what you'd be doing, John. Yeah, definitely the military. I like the discipline. I've always had um, a desire to join the military, and I like the, you know, what they do. Um, not always their causes or why they're doing it, oh, um, nice. but I definitely do like running around with loads of weight and shit loads of men. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> 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 right. There you go. Harold, let's go. What do you want to do? Don't back. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> boxing, surely. Um, I don't know. If I didn't get into the fitness industry, I'd probably have ended up going back to the army, to be honest. Mm. I'd have probably ended up going back. Because um, I do miss... Like Joe said, the routine, the lifestyle, uh, living with my mates. Yeah, I, d I do miss it, getting to travel. Every day was different. Um, but, yeah, to be fair, my other one would be like, boxing. I'll pursue that full time. But I think that's one of them things you have to start from a young age to really get the best chances at. It's all about who you know. It's not necessarily how good you are. But, yeah, the army. I'll, I'll probably go back to the army if it weren't for... Um, the situation I'm in now, but okay. I love the situation I'm in now, so I wouldn't change it. I'd love to say a footballer, but I'm not good enough, so um, I don't know, I mean, like maybe uh, a car salesman or something like that, I think a bit like of uh, like <laughs> a... Yeah. No, the only reason, not because not of that, because I want to do that, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like, I've always been in it since I was young in terms of the fitness industry, so I can't really think, but I think like something like a bit so of like wheelie and dealer, I think I could sell a few things and... Oh, have a look at the old chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I reckon I could tell a few things and have a little chat. I'd like to think myself as a confident speaker and that. So probably something like that. I'm not saying that would be it. I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Well, you, Darren, you've been in a building I'll be, game probably? Still? I'll be packing them in at Wembley, mate, as a guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know, really. Fitness, that's me. I like fitness. I like that's a bit of the construction industry uh, a that, and music, obviously. But otherwise, no. Fitness, really, or music. One yeah. of them two things. Okay, show it out. Just two things I like. Well, that's it, guys. We're going to wrap it up for the first part of this. But, um, yeah, look out for the next episode and we'll try and answer more of your questions. But um, thank you and we'll see you soon. That's it. Bye-bye. Adios. Cheers.